Got another session here of how to fly an FPV multi-rotor using FPV Freerider as our learning environment. And we're here in the car park again, and we're going to do another uh, more finesse drill. And I'm going to warn you ahead of time that I'm probably going to crash a lot in this exercise. This is uh, going to be a little bit more of a theoretical exercise than a, a practical demonstration. I'm going to do my best to get you some good examples. But I also don't feel like it's fair if I just sort of cherry pick and record and only show you the good takes. You know, that's not what I'm about. Um, I'm going to make sure I get you some good examples. Uh, but if I crash a lot, that's because what I'm showing you is, I mean, it's hard. So, <laughs> you know, eh, some things are hard. All right, let's get going. So what I want you to do in this session is I want you to start doing tighter turns around one set of columns like I'm going to show you here. I'm doing it the short way around the car park just so I get I get just enough of a straight to get the turn to happen. Oh, sorry. Oh, wow. That was some, I was talking. I wasn't paying attention to my flying. I get just enough of a straight to sort of get done with the turn before there's another one, but not the long way. The long way, there's just a lot of straight. And I want you to work on getting this consistent and smooth. As always, that's what we're striving for. Smooth, consistent, repeatable motions. Oh, that's getting a little out of control. See, I told you I was going to crash a lot. When you start, you can take these turns a bit wide and swing out toward the outside. See, I'm right up against the outside uh, columns. If you like, try to find the amount of yaw and roll that is the right amount to sort of make the turn uh, work for you. You may find that trying to get like perfect coordination is not ideal. And you may do better with maybe a little more yaw or a little, a little more roll. I find that maybe just a little extra yaw here helps me look into the turn and get it working better. I don't know, play with it. Start to learn where your turn in point is. You'll notice I'm not really apexing this. See it here? That was an apex to the outside. I'm kind of hitting this hole kind of tight. If I were to treat this like a turn, here I'm going to do two. I would have an apex and then uh, uh, one, two, and back in again. But since I'm cutting this as an inside turn, I have an inside apex there against the pole. I'm not swinging to the outside to get a, sort of a turn-in point, an apex, and, a, and a, a, an exit point. Rather, my a, I just have a, one apex there at the inside. I'm probably not using all the right terms for this. I'm not actually, um, I don't know much about racing drivers. So if you know about racing, you're probably groaning at the, my use of the terms, so be it. Anyway, start working up your speed there uh, until you get a good and smooth, tight turns, consistent. I'm going to try and get a little speed here. Maintaining your altitude. Missed that apex, went a little wide there. I'm going to be nice and close to that column on the inside. A little, a little too close. That wasn't a great turn. They'll turn into that one. Whoa, that whoa, that was close. So I screwed that up. Let's see if I can get myself set up properly again. Could probably get that a little tighter. Let me if I can get this a little faster for you. A little hard to go faster without adding more up tilt. Now let me point some things out here for you. One of the things I want to point out is that as you're doing these turns, you should not really ever need to pitch forward very much. Say so I roll to the side. If I exit the roll, if I exit the roll with the turn correctly coordinated, I should be pitched forward 
the right amount, the same amount that I entered the turn. And if you watch my roll stick, I sh you should see, let me get a little speed so I can coordinate it. Well, let me, let me actually, I'm trying to speed up in the middle of the turn. Let me carry a little speed through the turn so you can see. You should see that I am not pitching forward. It's really all roll and no pitch. If anything, I'm pitching back a little bit, but mostly I'm not pitching at all, and I'm just using yaw and roll. And if you think about it, um, if we go to a wide open track, if I am turning like this, and I want to exit this turn pointed forward, you see, if I just stop rolling and continue to yaw, the horizon will flatten out, and I'll be I'll be going forward in the direction I want to go. Again, here I am doing a coordinated turn with yaw and roll. Let me pick up some speed so it gets nice and sharp. Yaw and roll, and now I'm going to stop rolling, continue yawing, and the horizon will level out, and I'm still moving in the right direction. So if I just stop inputting roll slightly before the end of the move, I will come out of the move already pitched forward in the direction I want to go. I shouldn't need to I shouldn't need to pitch forward at the end of the turn to gain speed. So if you find yourself needing to pitch forward at the end of the turn to pick up speed, you may not have coordinated it smoothly. See I'm really never pitching forward here at all. Just using that roll motion to translate, combined with yaw, to translate into pitch. Now, as you get better at this, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to tighten this up so you are much closer to the inside columns. And it's going to be, take on a very different characteristic. <laughs> when they take on a characteristic like that, I missed it entirely. It's going to be a much sharper turn. What I want you to work on, though, is don't let it become kind of a going to be hard for me to demonstrate without crashing. Don't let it become kind of a flat turn, whip around, and then turn the other direction. Let me try to give you a bad example. It's a little hard to do the bad example. Kind of like that. That was an example of what I want you not to do. Yeah, see how I'm kind of coming to a stop there as I sort of... What I want you to do is try and keep your throttle at the right speed to keep your throttle up and, and smoothly go through these turns. Even though they're tight turns, try and keep them smooth and find the right turn-in point, the right uh, yaw and roll combination, to make a smooth, tight turn, staying to the inside. You will need to drop your throttle as you enter the move. This is where I'm going to crash a lot. You will need to drop your throttle just a little bit as you enter the turn. You always have to decelerate a little before a turn. I told you I was going to crash a lot. This is a hard one for me. I hope it's a hard one for you. I hope it gives you some challenges and opportunity to learn. As your turn gets tighter, you're going to need a lot more yaw and roll to make it work. And you may also swing wide if you're not careful and hit the outside wall. I did that just to demonstrate that. <laughs> yeah, right. The more speed you've got, the earlier you will need to anticipate the turn and start the turn. You'll need to start the turn before you even really get there. It's going to look like you're almost going to be turning to hit it. 
And I find instead of, in a, if you were to do a coordinated turn, the pole would kind of stay in the same position in your view. I find it almost helps to yaw, to yaw a lot more to anticipate the turn and then finish it with roll. Oh, I was lucky. Okay, so that's the next thing to work on, is those tight turns like that. As always, focus on doing them uh, smoothly. This is going to be a case where it's going to be difficult for you to do them slowly at first. Normally I would say go slow and smooth and then work up to speed, but you can see that doing these smooth, slowly, has a very different feeling than doing them fast. You know, it's, oh, I'm just kind of flying around now. That's not very hard, flying slowly around. It's only when you start to pick up speed that they sort of take on a, an interesting character and really start to feel like a, that's, oh, that's real nice. start to feel like something interesting. Now I'm getting a little wide here, so let me bring it back in tight. Oh, that was way too soon. All right. As always, focus on your entry point. Find your entry point. Find the right amount of yaw and roll to get a good, a good smooth turn. Keep the throttle smooth as you can, and that'll make for speed. Uh, you are going to need to cut your throttle as you go through the sharper turns. You always need to cut your throttle going into a turn, uh, unless it's a very, very gradual turn. You'll usually need to cut your throttle uh, the same way that a race car driver will hit the brakes going into a turn to lose speed. You generally need to decelerate to make a turn, and then you accelerate after you hit the apex and move out of the turn. Um, for a very, very sharp turn like this, the decelerate may basically be like the whole first half of the turn, and then the accelerate may be the whole second half of the turn. So it may just be sort of cut the throttle, turn, jam on the throttle, get out of it. But make it as smooth as you can, and, uh, and of course, just work on not crashing. All right, that's the exercise I want to give you today. Uh, have fun with it, and happy flying.